So today at the Titan the Theory Seminar, uh, we have the pleasure of hearing Kay Wong from Rutgers University, who will tell us about the RIPS machine. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you for giving me this great opportunity to practice. And uh, so um, the, my talk will be about the RIPS machine. Okay, so the first part of my talk would be a survey around the uh, classical RIPS machine. And then I'll talk about my work, and if time allows, I will try to sketch the proof and maybe give some uh, applications. And um, okay, so this is about geometric group theory. So the basic idea of geometric group theory is try to uh, analyze um, algebraic properties of uh, algebraic structure of a group by studying uh, nice actions of the group on some topological or geometric spaces. And the classical theorem along the line is the best uh, theor theorem theory. And for their theory, they studied um, the group uh, so for this talk, G will always be a finitely, finitely generated, or if you want to, you could think it as a finitely presented group. And uh, F is a free group with rank greater or equal to two. Okay. So for the uh, best theory, theorem, uh, theory, it studied uh, groups ad, uh, admitting gr uh, actions on some placial trees. And uh, the fundamental theorem there is, um, so if you have, a, uh, so let's call this tree T, and if you have a group uh, acting on T, and then you could take the quotient, uh, the, the, uh, the quotient of this action. So you would have T mod out G. This would be a, uh, this is a graph of spaces. And then you could, uh, let's call this space A or Q. Let's call it, it A. And then you could take a point. Let's take a point in A, and then you could talk about the fundamental group of this graph of spaces. And the main theorem says that this one is isomorphic to the group you started with, which is G. Okay, so to study the algebraic uh, structure of G, you could study the action of G on the tree. And um, um, one output of this would be Okay, let me write it down first. A group acting freely on a simplicial tree as free. <laughs> that is, be uh, so if acting freely, it means um, uh, besides the identity, no element fi uh, has a fixed point. And then if you take the quotient, um, then the edge stabilizer, uh, all the edge stabilizers and all the vertices, uh, all the vertex stabilizers will be trivial. So you have a graph. The fundamental group of a graph is free. Okay, and uh, so far is everything clear? What is oh. a simplicial tree? Oh, so so that that's so that that's a tree with um, edges and the vertices. So so the, the main thing about it. So that's a, a regular tree. You could think it as an infinite tree, but the vertices should be uh, discrete. It shouldn't be dense. Uh, and uh, in particular, a finite tree is a simplicial tree. There are more general trees. Yeah. Our trees, trees. And oh, I see. order trees. Right. But can I ask a question about that theorem? I mean, if you have a graph with three vertices and two edges. Okay. And you look at the group Z mod 2Z, which okay. I guess just attaches the, those two vertices together, right? So you just Z mod, Z mod 2Z. 
Oh, I see. So is that what would what would theorem say for Z mod two Z acting on that graph? Just rotation by 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, I, get, I get your question. So for here, the action, we are not along uh, involution. So you are not supposed to uh, map <laughs> an edge uh, to this. I oh, forgot okay. to mention it, sorry. So <laughs> let me add it here. I didn't follow my notes, sorry. Okay, so um, where is it? Uh, so the action, um, okay. Without so so the action with that inversions, okay, and um, okay, and uh, as P uh, Professor Orota uh, um, mentioned, so there's more general tree. So instead of simplicial tree, we um, so you could ask the same question: How about a group admitting free actions on R tree? So instead of simplicial tree, we may talk up, ask the question: How about groups acting freely on R tree? Okay. So let me give the definition for R tree first, uh, or a real tree. Here's the definition. Okay, here's the definition. Um, a real tree, or we call it uh, R and R tree, is a matrix space T such that for any two points x and y um, in T, there as a unique arc from x to y, and this arc is isometry isometric to an interval of the uh, real line. Okay, so, um, and uh, so uh, the answer to this would be uh, obviously no, because so it won't be free. For example, uh, we could take this example. For example, uh, you take z cross z. Let's call the generator here a, and call the generator here b. And then you could take the number line, and let's say here is zero and a is the action that takes 0 to 1. So the regular uh, translation takes 0, 1, 2, 1, 2. two. So take 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, and take 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, like this. And then b takes 0 to pi. So it takes 0 pi to pi to pi, and, and so on. And because uh, pi is irrational, so clearly this is a uh, free action, but the uh, z cross z is not free. Okay, and um, so in 90, 91, when Morgan and Shilin was studying about the um, surface groups admitting free actions, uh, they conjectured that. So I have a, a question. So, so do you need that the arc, the isometry, is the, is the same as the distance from x to y or not? Or that this, uh, this, the interval has the same length as the distance? Yes. Or? Uh, so, so you have questions about the real yeah, tree. tree. Okay. So the interval is the same length as the distance from x to y? Yes. So, so that's a that's an ordinary tree. Like, uh, if you have any two point, uh, two point, it's a space. If you have any two point, there's a unique arc, so it feels like a tree. But there's a ma some measure 
on the tree that if you have two points, you have a distance. So the distance is given by this as a morphism from the arc to the interval of the real line. And that's, okay, that's the, yeah. yeah so, so, it's just, yeah. So, so it's like the real line. Um, that's uh, our tree. Just, just there are infinite many like vertices. So we don't talk about vertices here. Any point could be a vertex. Okay. So this is a counterexample because the line is an R tree. You're saying? Yes. But line is also a simplicial tree, right? With vertices. So when you oh. mark zero, one, two, three, then that's that's a simplicial tree. And you are not supposed to take zero pi. So there's no vertex at pi. Okay, and uh, here's the uh, uh, conjecture. So 1991, Morgan and, okay, they conjectured that. Um, so for any finitely generated group G, Okay, finitely generated groups that act freely on real trees um, are free product of um, surface groups and free abelian groups. And uh, so people was trying to answer this question and uh, rips uh, developed the RIPS machine to understand this question and it, he, gave, he gave a positive answer for this. So this is true. And um, so when he described this, uh, it's more on the tree instead of on the band complex. And in 1995, um, Vesvina and Finn was trying to um, interpret a uh, Rips machine in a more geometric setting, and they described the machine as the uh, uh, processes of um, moves on band complex. So uh, there are other descriptions of Rips machine, for example, by uh, Gabriel uh, Lavit and uh, Pauling. It's more on the tree side instead of on the band complex. Now let me give you the definition of the band complex. Okay. So, uh, Sorry, could you just give an example of pi one of s uh, surface group acting on an R tree uh, freely? What's what's this? Is there a standard example? Uh, so so. For uh, surface group. So if, it, if you have like pi one of a of a, of a surface, does it act uh, freely on some R tree? Okay, you may take this example like uh, so. Suppose uh, so. This is the fundamental That's group of torus. I think it's like genus two. Uh, so I don't have an example in my head. Actually, you just take a measured lamination in the, in the surface. Yeah. So that's the same thing. It's compact, uh, maybe it's boundary. Surface, surface group includes surfaces with boundary. Yeah. So it includes surfaces with boundary. Yes. Boundary. Okay, and uh, so now I'll try to describe the uh, describe the uh, rips machine. And in Pennsylvania thin setting, it moves on band complexes. So now I'll try to uh, define a band complex. Okay, so. Uh, 
So here's the definition a band. B um, is a space of form B cross I, where B is an arc of the real line and I is the unit interval from zero to one. Okay, so it's basic, so a band is something you think it should be. So this is a band. Let's call this one B and call this one I, which is from zero to one. And there's some notion here. So, uh, so for a vertical fiber here, uh, so that's called a vertical fiber and you could call this horizontal and also, um, and uh, so for this side of the band, and let's call this B, and then the other side, let's call it the dual of B, and they are the, uh, so B, and the dual of B are bases of B. Okay, and now. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but, but uh, just this, about this conjecture. Yes. And have C be zero goes to E or something. Yes. But then doesn't that? Oh, I see. That's a that, that, that's a uh, uh, billion. Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And um, okay. So this is a band, and now um. Uh, real tree, a uh, real graph, gamma is a finite union of closed intervals. So, uh, so basically, a real graph here is uh, just a multi-intervals. Like you have several, um, several intervals. Okay, <laughs> something look like this. Um, let me give a better picture. Okay, and then a union of bands. A union of bands um, as a space Y um, obtained from a real graph gamma by um, attaching a finite um, collection of bands. Okay, so suppose we have this is our real graph. Um, and then we have like three bands. So one is here and one is here. Sorry, let me add one more there. And then one is here. Okay, when we, uh, so because we, uh, when we do the band, there's some measure here, because that's B, that's some interval in the real graph, there's some measure here. And uh, for the real graph, everything has a measure. So when we attach, we wish it to be homeomorphic. So uh, suppose here is one, here is one, here is one. So you could attach this band, band here. I uh, suppose the length here is two. Let's call this A, call this B, call this C, here is two, and then we could glue them on like this way. So this is A, this is B, this is C. <laughs> okay, so th this is a union of bands. And so for a band, we could talk, uh, it is a kind of fully aided by the vertical fiber. So for each fiber, we could call that a leaf. And similarly here, uh, if we extend the laminate, uh, the 
if we want to care about the boundary, we use foliation. If we don't care about the about the singular point, we call it uh, lamination. Okay, so we could talk a leaf look. So this is a leaf. That is a leaf, and the, the, the big Y in the middle is also a leaf, okay? And so this is union of bands. Now, um, okay, so a band um, complex is um, the is a relative CW two complex uh, uh, X obtained from a union of bands Y by um, successively attaching um, zero, one, and two cells in the full uh, so when we attach, there are some restrictions such that the first one is um, the images of um, attaching map maps of one cells are contained in gamma and two the images of attaching maps of two cells are vertical. Okay, so uh, so we have a um, Okay, so we have a, uh, so we, we, ha we build a, a union of bands before, so for example, something look like this. Okay, so th this, so we have three bands, one, two, three, and those are the leaves. And, and uh, it does not look like a complex so far, we want to make it more like a complex, so we need to add in some zero cells, one cells, and two cells. So we could add in zero cells, and then when you put on us, the one cells, the intersection should in the gamma, which is an underlying real graph. And then we could add in two cells here, two cells here, two cells here, two cells here, and the intersection should be vertical, so within a leaf, now it more looks like a complex. So that's uh, a band com the definition for band complex. And, um, okay, and... So, so what intersection is vertical? Uh, this is vertical. Uh, so the intersection, when you attach a two cell, the intersection between the two cell and the band should be vertical. So, so when you add on, you don't want to um, make any change to your, f uh, uh, so for the union of bands, we have some foliation here. We don't want to change that. It gives you the measured, uh, we have a measured foliation or lamination here. And when you add on two cells, that's away from the lamination. It's just make it, uh, so you could think of the band as generators and we add on some two cells to make the relations, but it has nothing to do with the foliation. So, so should we be thinking about the living in the surface or something like that? Yes, okay, so maybe a more better example would be something like this. So, uh, uh, 
Uh, so this is one band. So, uh, so the, the, one, the line in the middle is a real graph, and then you add on one band. Uh, I did, so, so this supposed to identify here, supposed to identify there. And then we could add on another band, more like this. And um, if we choose the lens properly, we could make it go like, so, so the leaf goes up there, then come down here, then goes up there, like could, could be dense if we want to. And then, uh, so if you look at the boundary component, it's this this big circle there, and if you glue on a two cell there, you get back to your uh, torus. So that's is, um, so without the two cell, it's more like this. And if you glue on the two cell, you get a surface. Uh, so that's the definition of union of bands. Uh, good. Uh, sorry, the, the band complex. And now, um, so we so we're supposed to study graph group action, a group acting on a tree. Now, what I give you is just a band complex. So I need to um, make the connection between band complex and a uh, group action. Okay, so uh, it is obtained by the following way, um, by the uh, resolution. So let me give you the definition here. Let X be a band complex. Um, with uh, the property that the fundamental group of X is G, a uh, resolution for a G tree T. Uh, when I say G tree, it means a tree admitting an action where G, uh, so G is a finite general. Uh, presented group if you want to and acting on a tree and so this means that and then um, as a G equivariant map R from X to that to T such that the image of a generalized leaf is a point. A generalized leaf of X2 um, is a point. And R embed um, the lifts of um, basis of x. Okay, here uh, x two that means the universal cover of x, um, and here's uh, so that's uh, uh, so so. Uh, uh, let me write down the claim first. So uh, this is a proposition by Morgan and Schiller. They say that every G tree T has a resolution. So uh, in the uh, so let me. So, uh, so this, so by resolve a tree, uh, that's a, you could get from a, uh, giving you a G tree by resolving it, you could have a band complex. Let me uh, try to <laughs> say how it goes. Uh, so, suppose here you have a G tree T. So that's some tree like this, and then. Um, so a G, if, uh, if we assume it is finally presented, then you could uh, build a complex X with fundamental group G, and then take its universal cover. So that's X tilde. We need to build a map from X tilde to the tree. And uh, 
So, um, so X2 that that's some um, CW complex, it has simplices. And for each, so when we, when we build a map, we want the map be G equivariant means, uh, um, so first of all, um, take all the, vert all the, so here in the X, so here is X2, the here is T, take all the vertices and pick your favorite uh, G equivariant map on the vertices. So let's say this one to there, this one to here, and this one to here. And of course, when G acting here, by the DAC transformation, it takes this simplest simplex to some other places. And when G acting here, it takes this to other places. So the map should correspondingly be defined. And then once we have this vertex goes here, this vertex goes here, and this vertex goes here. Okay, now we want to extend the definition on edges. So from the point to the cross um, in the tree, there's a unique arc because it's a tree. So you could, so just define that this edge should go to there. And then similarly, the edge, it is well defined on edges. Once it's well defined on edges, you could extend it to the whole simplex. So here, for example, this little bit map here. So, so once you extend it properly, you get a band complex structure like this. Okay, um, so that, that's the, the proof. Now, um, once, so, so for now, the punchline is I give you a G tree, you have a band complex. And to, to study the action of G on the tree, you study the band complex. And there's, uh, so here's one more definition. Uh, component of y. So x is always a band complex, y is always its underlying union of bands, and gamma is always its underlying real graph. And a component of y is simplicial of every, um, if every leaf of y is compact. A component of y is minimal um, of every leaf of y is dense and up to moves um, here's a theorem we had before again by Morgan and Sh Shalen and 8080 they said uh, so for any band complex x uh, we can always decompose this into this joint union of finite components, finitely many components with the property that each component is either simplicial or minima. And the Rips machine is basically study, uh, so for some placial pieces, we think it's easy because every leaf is um, compact. It's just some bands glued together with no quite, with not much interesting structure. So the main part is studying the minimal component and the Rips machine will study the um, 
um, minimal component and Okay, so here's a picture I borrowed from the calculus book. <laughs> okay, so this is a RIPS machine. Okay, so it takes as input a band complex. And then the RIPS machine is made of moves. Okay, so those are moves. I'll talk about moves later. So you give me some band complex and it will go through some moves and then it will give you an output which is another band complex in some normal form of some normal form. Okay, and when we do those moves, those moves are actually um, elementary uh, homotopy uh, moves you could do in the elementary homotopy uh, theory. Just it has to be respect to the, uh, la uh, the measured lami lamination you have on those band complexes. And also we're studying this band complex because it resolves a tree and we, what we really want to do study is a group acting on that tree. So when you do the move it should obey the following um, rule that is um, so suppose you ha so the moves so you have an input of x then you let's call this x sub zero you start to apply the rips machine like this okay x three and so on so each one is a move when we do the move um, so xi and xi plus 1 should are, are related by a move um, and resolves the same tree. Okay, and um, so so give give me a tree. I resolve it. I have a band complex. Go through the process. I'll give you a better complex. Resolve the same tree, but a better complex in a standard form. Now, now let me talk about the standard form. Um, Okay, so here is the theorem by Batwina and Fan, 95. Um, X prime is a finite a disjoint union of components, each of um, each has, each of which has one of the following um, four taps. Okay, one is simplicial as we expect, the other one called surface. and then Toro and Fen. Okay, and um, okay, and for surface and Toro, they kind of have their standard model. Let me write it down here. So for a surface tab, um, before I go further, I need to uh, I forgot to mention that. So for a um, band, when you attach, there are kind of three types. One is, uh, so we could give weight for each band. So if a band, when you attach, it is an annulus, then you call, the, so you call the weight of this band be weight zero. And if it's a 
mobile band, let's call this C, then the weight of C would be one half. And for all the others, okay, so all the others, um, the weight are all the others. The weight of D, we call the weight B1. So if we, so those with zero band, if you look at it in the tree, that would be contribute to the edge stabilizer. So if we are ignoring all those with zero or with one half band, the standard model for surface and, uh, for surface and toro would be the following. So for a surface, up, uh, up to ignoring weight zero and weight one half bands, a surface component as a compact hyperbolic surface with Geodesic uh, lamination. And for a toro, uh, toro component as the two skeleton of uh, N torus. with the code dimension with the lamination induced by irrational planes of Co-dimensional one, and for the yes. Can I just ask a quick question about the rips machine? Yes. Are all those moves canonical, or are there any choices? Uh, so so uh, sometimes there are choices, and you, you are free to make any choice. Uh, it's possible that you get the, the x prime is not unique. No, but that's a standard, uh, but, but the type is fixed. So, uh, actually. If you put x prime back in the machine, you would get x prime? Uh, x, x double prime. Like, uh, so, actually, the sequence goes like forever. Oh. So, you have x. So, um, I was planning to describe the machine, but I don't have. I went too slow. So, uh, but the process, is, so the RIPS machine consists two processes. And uh, so once you take a one band complex in, you put it in process one. Process one is can, so there's a notion called free subarc. So the first, uh, so if you see, so this is called a free subarc, meaning it, it all, so it's only in one, um, band with positive measure, so what we want to collapse it. Uh, of course, when you do RIPS machine, uh, everything, uh, uh, so that's a minimal component, so you shouldn't have compact leaf at all. So you, you're, you could just collapse here. So the first process is try to get rid of all the free arcs. And the second process is, um, so there's a second process. So the, for the first process, if you're always able to find a free subarc, so you, you might able you might stack in the first process like forever. And if you stack in that process, the output called a thin tap. And in the second, um, and if at some point you don't have free subarc, then you move on to process two. And process two, uh, there's something to do and there's a complexity. If the complexity at process two goes down, then you went, you goes back to the, you go back to the first process. If it never goes down, you stack there, then you, uh, the, it's either surface or toro, depends on the, the uh, so, so if you always, at some point, it's kind of always weight two, 
like uh, there's one band here, one band here. It feels like a surface, then you call that surface. If you have more things, like three or more positive bands, you call it a toro. So, uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the process. And then, so for the thing, so for surface and toro, they all have standard model, but we don't have standard model for thing tap. Um, Sometimes the thing tap called Lavite tap because he first uh, discovered it and studied it. And so the first part of my work is try to give uh, some uh, give some more structure on the thing component. Um, so uh, let me write it down here. Sorry. Okay. So. Um, So the main feature of the thin component is so uh, we have a union of so we have the union of bands and for thin tap you, there will be arbitrary long bands with very arbitrary small width created it and also it's naked it's away from uh, which means it's away from the attaching region of two cells so if you cut there you have a free decomposition and so if you assume your group ahead of time is freely indecomposable you don't need to think about that thing tab and um, so um, okay let me give you the first uh, so here's some structure I try to give for the thing tap let x equals to x0, x1, then x2. Uh, be an uh, infinite, be an infinite um, sequence of band complexes formed by the Ribs machine um, um, then there exist integers n greater than zero a greater than zero and m greater or equal to zero such that um, any for any n greater than the capital N Y N contains exactly um, M generalized bands of length less than a um, such bands um, are called short bands and So for uh, so before when we talk about union of bands, I only give you the definition for band. I didn't mention anything about the generalized band. It's more like a generic band. So it's possible that you have like two consecutive bands look like this, and after a while you see some features. There are more bands, and those are just consecutive bands. There's nothing going on there. So for this consecutive band, you call it a generalized band. It's more like uh, edge and generic edge, so kind of thing. So that's a generalized band. And that's a fact proved by Bethlehem and Finn that over this machine, um, so after a while, the number of generalized bands is bounded. 
And so the first part is saying that, so for a thin tap, there is a fixed number of bands. Um, the length of that band won't change at all. So that's called the short band. And as a consequence, because um, in general, there are a bounded number of generalized bands. So for the, all the rest, uh, I called it long bands because the length of those generalized bands uh, grow like infinite to infinite as the process goes on. Okay, so I, let me write it down here. Um, as a consequence y and content of bounded number of general last bands whose length are greater than a um, those bands are called um, long bands and moreover, for n greater than the n we had before, there is a natural bijection between short band. in y, yn, and yn plus 1. And further, further exists a point greater than n such that two short bands either stay <coughs> connected or disjoint. <coughs> okay, and for those short bands, um, so for some large N, some of the bands either stay connected or not connected. So you can talk about components of union of short bands. And for each component, we, uh, I called it an island. So, uh, so for each component, of the union of short Bands is called an island. Okay, and now um, uh, I won't write the. Uh, let me give you picture instead of try to say it. So basically, you have some short bands. They are so each component that's an island. So it's something looks like this as time goes on. Um, they stay where they're supposed to be. And then there's some sh long band going like this way. Maybe some extra. Sorry. <laughs> so this is an island like in the middle and then there's some extra features here. So those are long bands going extra long there. At some place there are other islands. So you have several islands, find a, uh, a fixed number of islands, and then you have bounded number of long bands going from one island to another, or like from one island go after a while comes back at some places. So it gives the thin component a more or less a space of graph, uh, space of graphs 
uh, structure. And um, also, uh, so this one, uh, this uh, structure can be used in uh, to prove the shortening um, argument for the thin component. And there's another part of my work. I don't think I have time to say that. I'll just say it here. So suppose you have so for the Rips machine, it studied a group action, uh, one group acting on a tree, and it's possible that. Uh, ask questions about subgroup acting on a tree. And so suppose you have P, which is a subgroup of G, and both of them are acting on trees. And then we could build a pair of um, band complexes, so one for P and then one for G. And there's some, um, uh, some maps between here and there. And a priori, those two can be ugly, and that has nothing to do, uh, it's not in the standard form. So uh, the, the other part of my work, I call it the relative Rips machine. So it takes I as input a pair of band complexes, and then goes through a process similarly to the Rips machine, but not exactly. And then uh, the output would be both of them are uh, in the standard form, and also if surface, uh, if so, here you have several, you have a decomposition, have several components. Here you have a decomposition, have several components. So you could talk about pair of uh, components. Suppose here we have y, p, and then y g. And if this is surface of thing, that is surface of thing. Eventually, the um, relative Rips machine will convert this one as a finite cover of the other one. So that's the other part, uh, which I don't have time, sorry. So that's it. Okay. Are these computable, these numbers, A, and I mean, if you, if, can you write a computer program to compute what uh, A uh, would be, or is it, is it sort of not constructed? No. It's not constructed? Yeah. The resolution you were speaking of, is that resolution uh, quasi-asymmetric? The map, that map you were speaking The map should be G equivariant. It, it is quasi-asymmetry. And, um, so, uh, yeah. Okay, okay then. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>